Galactico policy made Real Madrid the strongest team in Europe. But did it allow money to become the dominant factor in the game? And what about the mastermind behind it? This is the story of Florentino Perez, who laid the foundation of Galactico policy. Watch this video till the end to find out all the controversies related to the powerful president of Real Madrid. So here we go. Florentino Perez is a demigod for Real Madrid fans. He is credited with making this club what it is today. But that's not the general perception. Fans from other clubs see him in a different light. For them, he's a cunning businessman who used the beautiful game to make money. So what's the truth? Before we talk more about this enigmatic businessman's efforts to transform Real Madrid, let's first talk about who he really is. Perez came from a poor household, but one thing was sure – he loved football and he was a die-hard fan of Real Madrid. Now, he loved the game, but he had to earn a living as well, right? So he pursued engineering at a university in the capital city of Spain. We would expect a person with an engineering degree to follow a technical field, like construction or something like that. But Perez was different – he wanted power. And what he did next was obvious – he joined politics. His stint at politics was short, but he now knew how to mix politics and football. His ultimate aim was to make a ton of money and gain power. By the time he involved himself with Real Madrid, he had already earned a huge amount of money through his various businesses. By 1995, Perez had just one focus – to become the president of Real Madrid, his favorite club. Becoming Los Blancos president is a big deal. A president is an all-in-all -all of the club. Just imagine controlling a club like Madrid alone. To wield that much power was a dream for Perez. But 1995 presidential elections didn't help Perez. Instead, Ramon Mendoza won the elections. In 2000, Perez was ready to go for the presidential seat one more time. Now he was faced against the current president, Lorenzo Sanz, who had just presided over a club which won Champions League twice – in 1998 and 2000. In other words, Perez needed a miracle to become president. Perez used his political acumen to beat the favorite Lorenzo Sanz. Perez had a new idea for the club. He promised an aggressive transfer policy – transfer one star player each season. And that's how the first era of Galacticos began. Florentino's Galactico policy transformed Los Blancos. But before we talk about its different eras, it's only appropriate to define what it really means. Galactico is a Spanish word which is used to describe footballers who are already superstars or have the potential to become out of this world. You say Galactico is related to Galactic, a word related to galaxies. No surprise that this term became popular in the early 2000s during Florentino Perez's first term as Real Madrid president. Did Perez have good intentions behind this policy? On surface, it appears that it did a lot of good to the club. Let me tell you how. For many years leading up to this policy change, Real Madrid consistently played second fiddle to Barcelona in La Liga. It was a long drought for them, as they went three decades without winning a European Cup. Their fortunes changed in 1998, when they finally lifted the Champions League trophy, repeating the feat in 2000. Despite their recent successes, Real Madrid was facing some major problems. They were having a debt problem, which were accumulated over the years, reaching a high figure of 278 million euros. They also struggled to attract fans, as tickets were hard to sell. In these days, Santiago Bernabeu was seldom filled, despite discounts and other incentives. Enter Florentino Perez, a man with a plan. His Galactico policy was going to become the bedrock of this team. When he was running for president, he promised to bring Luis Figo from Barcelona. Perez won the elections after getting 55% of the votes and a few days later, he presented Figo to the fans. Luis Figo was signed for a then-record 62 million euros. A new era for Real Madrid had already begun. The following season, Perez continued with the Galactico policy. This time, they had eyes on the world's best footballer of that time, Zinedine Zidane. Back then, Zidane was playing for Juventus and Madrid wanted to sign him at all costs. Real Madrid paid a world record fee for the French, a whopping 77.5 million euros. In the same season, Madrid won their ninth Champions League title. In the final, Zidane scored against Leverkusen and was a sensational goal to say the least. It was money well spent and Perez was vindicated. Next year, the Brazil icon Ronaldo joined Real Madrid for a fee of 46 million euros. He was just phenomenal. He scored 23 goals in his first debut season for his new club. With his impressive performance, Ronaldo helped Madrid lift their 29th Liga trophy. But that was not the end. In the year that followed, Madrid signed David Beckham, who had previously been playing for Manchester United. Beckham was as much of a star as Figo and Ronaldo. He was the European champion and the captain of the England team. Moreover, he had worldwide appeal, which is always beneficial for a club. 
In Perez's words, Beckham is a man of our times and a symbol of modern-day stardom. Another Englishman became the next Galactico for Real Madrid. Yeah, you guessed it right, I'm talking about Michael Owen. He joined Los Blancos in 2005. Robinho also joined in the same year, as did Sergio Ramos. They were the last of the Galacticos. While on the field, Real Madrid was performing well, but football is not about that alone. What happens off-field has also a major impact on the game and those who love it so much. Perez was successful in presiding over the club, his Galactico policy was paying dividends, but what he was doing off-field was criticized by all. Fans and club members were unhappy with how Perez was running things. They said he cared more about making money than winning games. They felt he was forgetting about the club's history and values, and more importantly, the debt was piling on. Perez was serious about solving the debt problem, so he took drastic action. He decided to sell some of the Real Madrid's land, including their training ground to raise money. They sold it for about 500 million euros to four companies. Some clubs thought there was something wrong about this deal and asked the EU to investigate. Many years later, it was found that they were right. This sale also caused some moral concerns because it made the gap between rich and poor areas in Madrid even bigger. This move was criticized by the Los Blancos fans. People also criticized Perez's Galactico policy. He signed big names like Zinedine Zidane, Ronaldo and Michael Owen. But some said these signings were more about making money from shirt sales than improving the team. The biggest criticism came in 2003, when Perez sold club legend Fernando Hierro. Hierro was loved by fans and selling him made many fans feel betrayed. The criticism against was growing with each passing day. In 2006, he resigned from his position. This was a surprise to many. He was gone, but he still had the club in his grip. It seemed he would return. And guess what? He did. After a break of three years, Perez once again returned as Real Madrid president in 2009. The fans were overjoyed, they expected to welcome more stars into their team and win more domestic and European trophies. And boy were their expectations met, Real Madrid was imbalanced and first thing that Perez did was to do something about it. His first signings in 2009 included the Brazilian Kaká from AC Milan, Karim Benzema from Lyon, Xabi Alonso from Liverpool and most famous of them all, Cristiano Ronaldo from Manchester United. Next year, Angel Di Maria and Mesut Ozil became part of the squad. Luka Modric would follow a year later in 2012 from Tottenham. Real Madrid was breaking one transfer record after another. In this regard, Cristiano Ronaldo's transfer from Manchester United is worth mentioning. The Spanish club splashed out a jaw-dropping 94 million dollar euros to bring the Portuguese star to the Bernabeu. Can you just believe it? In 2013, they did something like that when Gareth Bale transferred from Spurs to Madrid for a transfer fee of 100 million euros. In the same year, Isco also joined the club. Next year, Toni Kroos joined Real Madrid from Bayern Munich. In 2014, Perez achieved something which he always dreamt of as a Los Blancos fan. Real won the La Decima with a 4-1 victory over Atletico Madrid in the Champions League final. It was not just that, in 2017, Real Madrid won a historic double by winning La Liga and the Champions League. Despite the successes, Perez was largely criticized for his dictatorial way of running the club. I mean, some of the criticism did make sense. He saw in Real a machine from which to make money, not as a team which had a history and a unique identity. And what about his decision to sign the Super League agreement in 2021? It backfired so much that it collapsed. Not within weeks or months, but days. From ordinary football fans to journalists to politicians, everyone was against this idea and all for good reasons. But Perez seemed to be undeterred and he defended it on national television with all of his energy. For me, the signing of Super League and defending it even when it was all over is an indication of what kind of man Perez is. He is ambitious, but he doesn't seem to know any limits. What mattered more for him was influence and wealth. Today, Perez's control over the club is questioned more ardently than ever before, but the majority of Real Madrid want him to stay put. The reason is simple. Under his leadership, the club has achieved so much. Fans don't want anyone else running their team. Now, whatever you may think of this guy, he is still a character, isn't he? For some fans, he is a god who brought nothing but glory to the club they love so much. For others, he is evil, doing all of it to fill his pockets at the cost of the game. Super League debacle and how the fans reacted to it show that it's not the big people in big offices who decide the future of the game, but the fans. Football, as someone said, is by the people for the people. And remember, stay tuned for more football stories and updates. Thanks for watching.